I put out a video before to show off a CAD model for a power supply I was working on. This was more of an in the moment excitement for me as I had learned how to put together the use of KiCAD to input the schematic and lay out the board and then to use OpenSCAD to create parametric models for the components and then using FreeCAD with the KiCAD step up workbench to export the 3D models back into KiCAD. KiCAD has a very good library of components and footprints, but this is also a work in progress. In this case, they did not have the models for the transformer or the terminal blocks or the fuse holder. So I wanted to learn how to create those. They have a very open community where these footprints can be contributed. And it's one of my to do's to learn how to submit the 3D models and footprints that I've had to input for the parts that I have. There were a few comments on my last video relating to how I should explain what I did to get to this point. I didn't want to get into how to design circuits using KiCAD or FreeCAD, since there are already many good videos out there that do a very good job of this. I do plan on making a video about how to use the OpenSCAD and FreeCAD to create KiCAD 3D footprints. I'm still learning the details of how to do this according to their library standards, so I will come back to this when I can. I am not an electronics engineer or an electrical engineer. I do not do this as a profession. It is just a hobby interest of mine. So I find it challenging to find the time and energy to put into this and I get things done and I learn how to do things when I can. Musically, I have an interest in electric guitar and a little bit of experience tinkering with my own tube amplifier. I've been working on this for the last couple of years as a hobby um, to repair and restore it to make it functional, but also to improve on, on some of the areas of uh, where the it lacked in features. One problem I've had with this amplifier is something called the phase inverter or the phase splitter. Um, the original design, something called the long tail pair. Um, and it, I've never had it working properly for me in this amplifier. I went back to the original schematic and I set all the components to be the same values, but it was very problematic that I couldn't get it to produce an exact out of phase signal. Um, so I kind of just gave up on trying to make it work and went with something that I feel is, is like the modern superior equivalent of this. I got this idea from reading on the TubeCAD blog, how using an operational amplifier is, is basically as a, both an inverting amplifier, which is actually just a unity gain buffer, so that an input signal is split into the in phase and the out of phase signals. Now this is just a detail for push-pull amplifiers where you have to drive uh, the power tubes which work together in opposite pairs, kind of like a seesaw. So you'd have one side driven positive while the other side simultaneously driven negative. So it's it's very important based on how these amplifiers work uh, to have this to this pair of signals driven exactly out of phase. If they're not exactly out of phase, you end up having um, some of the power supply hum or, or unfiltered DC power supply coming through on the output sound. Um, so using op amps instead of having tubes to do this phase inversion um, produces the perfect out of phase signal that I wanted. Now here's where the problem comes is that op amps need plus and minus 15 volts. Now in a tube amplifier, everything we have is 6.3 volts for the filaments and then several hundred volts for the tube plates. So there's no DC power supply that's low voltage or plus or minus 15 volts. What I came up for for this amplifier was to build a small module that uses a little DC to DC converter, which turns 4.5 to 9 volt to DC into positive or negative 15 voltage, like a dual rail output. The problem with that is it needs DC. So I took the filament lines and which is 6.3 volts AC. And I just have a small bridge rectifier and a filter capacitor, which seems to be good enough to drive this. And this unit produces a very stable 
ripple free output on its own, which is suitable just to power the one operational amplifier that I'm using here. And this is totally a hack. So I don't have to like have any consideration for powering more than one op amp. But th th my challenge was this DC to DC converter. It's very expensive for what it does. Like this is about 20 to $30 Canadian and it only produces enough power to power perhaps one or two op amps. So I wanted to design a supply that was more generic and useful that could power several op amps, such as if I wanted to design a graphic equalizer into an audio amplifier or a tube amplifier. Now, separately, I have this other project that's been on my back burner for a while. This is an old linear power supply I created when I was a kid. I guess I was 10 years old, so maybe 1987 era. Um, it's one of those things where all the parts that made it, I was able to buy from Radio Shack back when Radio Shack existed and still sold electronic components. So this is just a simple 317 based linear regulator. How this works is you, you give it AC voltage from line voltage through a transformer. The transformer steps it down to something sensible. I think this is about 17 volts. And then the regulator uses a variable resistor to produce a DC voltage from adjustable from zero to the output that the power supply could do. I think also about 18 to 20 volts here. So this is a circuit board I etched, one of those kits you can get back at Radio Shack. I think I just used the Sharpie to lay it out. And I look at this now and cringe, like these are old wires I, I stole from some telecom cable. And this is a wire from the, like a lamp cord or something. So this is just the schematic of how, how I built it before. It's pretty simple, just a transformer, bridge rectifier, filter capacitor, regulator, controls for the regulator, and then an analog meter to show you the voltage and then output terminals. I've had this power supply with me all this time and it still works well, but it's just not very useful to me because it only has the one output and it's a very low current output. So I thought, well, I could rebuild this power supply to be something that's more useful to me that has maybe more than one voltage, maybe a little bit more current. I want something that will fit into this existing case I have. I'm just going to replace the circuit board and the guts with something else. So I was reading around a bit and I thought I want to make something a little more powerful. And I could just use an LM317 again, now with transistors to boost it. But I found there's this other product that um, basically it's a drop-in replacement for the 317 but it does higher current in this case up to 1.2 amps no sorry three amps so i think that's something i want to look at and also um all the components these days are surface mount so i'm going to use KiCad to design the circuit board and then have it made at osh park because i don't do circuit boards myself anymore so anyhow this is what the current version of that regulator from the previous video is what I've decided is that I want to use the same circuit for both um, my power supply and for my amp building projects. Um, because really, if I'm going to use this circuit board and spend time and energy to design it, I might as well have it solve two different problems. Plus, with OSH Park, you get three circuit boards for the price of one. That's just how they ship it in units of three. I guess that's how they do their panelizing. So what I did for my previous design was I changed the regulators from being fixed regulators, which were only plus or minus 15 volts before. And I had a second 3.3 volt output. Um, now I have basically two sets of positive and negative adjustable regulators. Now, um, I can explain this. This is on my GitHub page. I'll put the link in the comments. You guys can read it better later. Um, but the idea is I found a schematic on the internet for how to make a dual tracking power supply. So in this case, we use an op amp that basically monitors the voltage level that you set from the variable resistance that drives the positive regulator. And this will basically create an inverted signal of the opposite voltage, which is used here to provide 
the control for the negative voltage regulator. So this is called dual tracking power supply, which means that if I have one control knob and I adjust the voltage to be a positive voltage on the output, the negative regulator will also be adjusted to produce the same voltage but negative on the negative rail. So this is something I think I want to use for a benchtop supply because it's convenient to set two voltages from one knob. And in my audio amplifier projects, I can just use a potentiometer on the surface of the circuit board, a tiny little trim pot, and I could just set the voltage to be plus and minus 15 volts. It turns out the regulators aren't that much more expensive if I get the fixed regulators or these adjustable ones. Um, the only difference, the challenge that this creates is that I have an extra op amp, which I don't mind, but the op amp itself needs to have power, in this case, plus or minus 15 volts. So what I did was I added a small other set of regulators, which provide plus or minus 15 volts to the op amps to control the regulators. And these power supply regulators, I, I don't expose them off the board. They're like an internal power supply that's used to drive the controls for the regulators, if that makes sense. So where I'm at now is I, um, I designed the board, I laid it out, I put it up on OSH Park. Um, I'm just waiting for build it and it should come in the mail in a few weeks. Well, that's all I have for now. I'll have to do a video later when I actually have a PC board and more stuff to update. Uh, thank you for watching. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments of what else I could make a video of, I'm happy to try to make more content. Um, I have a lot of project ideas. It, it's just challenging for me to put them together in a concise way that's meaningful or entertaining.